and uh, we are live. Today is May 21st, 2017, and I'm not channeling, at least not channeling usual way. Uh, first, I will do the announcements. Um, so if you want to be invited to, to spontaneous... Yeah. Let me mute. I'll mute. Uh, Alicia, I muted you. I can unmute whenever you need. Uh, so to be invited to our spontaneous and planned webinars, um, go to hukola.org and click subscribe. And um, also we do the workshop in August. So it's now a great time to buy air tickets because air tickets will become more expensive soon. Like it's now already like they're growing and rising, so it's a good chance. We, we invited guests, and I hope some of the guests will make it. And uh, these are nice guests, our friends, like Roxy was interested, um, and um, Rob Gothier was interested, but, you know, they will decide at last moment, of course. It's, it's normal. So workshop will be interesting, hukola.org. It's all the same destination, hukolo.org. So to, to be invited, go to hukolo.org and click subscribe and you add your email, you'll get invitations by email. Now for uh, workshop, go there, click workshop. To get our disc to join our discussion on Facebook, go to hukolo.org, click on discussion and join our Facebook group. And there is a few more things there. Hold on a second, I will double check. And uh, also there is um, uh, ah, Hukula Club, yeah, some of the webinars are paid, so you go to uh, Hukula.org and click on Club and uh, pay $10 a month and join our pay paid webinars. And also in paid webinars now included the classes, we, so we do one hour classes with Jim Chandler and Tucker on Friday's morning. So. To see the calendar, go to hukla.org, click on, uh, just there, there is a calendar. Also, there is a jump page there, which now is called Hukla Webinar. So it should be called jump, but anyway. So click on jump page and, um, or Hukla Webinars page, and you can see all the, all the, all the things, all the uh, announcements. And the next one is coming. A uh, couple of my uh, Yogananda channelings and also on Friday will be channeling class by the Kerr, uh, by Jim, by the Kerr through Jim. It's Friday 12.30 EST for one hour. Okay, so these are announcements. So today I wanted to talk for myself. I guess it's all channeling, but it's all, ch it, now it's like, I. it's more like me physical and uh, whatever I, whatever comes to my mind. But basically I wanted to speak about practicality and it came to our attention that some people just get crazy <laughs> and um, get themselves in trouble. And um, and that's an interesting question. What, uh, what, what can we, how can we help them basically? Um, so the main thing is of course, the expectation that they will be taken, right? Taken off planet. So, you know, that's my, my expectation too. I want to be there. I know there is a group of people out there who are living with the aliens, using alien technologies, have fun. They live on different planets. They don't have to live in solar system. They can be anywhere. They can be uh, far away in a different galaxy, in an Andromeda galaxy. And they still go through, you know, alien technologies. They can pop up on Earth, do some work, come back. So they become agents of uh, friendly, friendly extraterrestrials. So it never hurts to apply, and I keep applying. But of course, I don't want to, to live only by me. I want to take my friends with me and my family with me. So it didn't happen. But basically, my, my idea was that how about we do peaceful broadcasting, like YouTube broadcasting, internet broadcasting. That idea is still valid, and um, um, I still apply. I think it, I will be more efficient out there than here. Um, we can do more broadcasts, we'll have fun, we'll interview extraterrestrials and, uh, and broadcast the interviews down here through YouTube. That didn't happen yet. 
I'm waiting. Uh, my first application was in May, three years ago. I think it, oh, it may be already, I think it's already four years ago, 2013. So it's four years ago. I'm still waiting. And there was next application for the visit to the colonies, right? Um, also, I was the first to apply and still didn't happen not physically i really hoped to, to go physically so um take it as is it is how much you believe it is how much you believe the thing is it right yeah for some people it is real right like our friend kapulnik Ah, she doesn't want to pronounce her name. Anyway, our friend Star Traveler. Um, she is so much out there that in her reality, it is real. I met a few other people who, are, who go out there, like abductees, who have been visiting the ship. So that thing is real for some people. And some of them are not that crazy. Some these people actually who are abductees who really visit the things there's so much ground that you can't believe these people visit the, the ship so it's not that you have to build, become ultra spiritual to get out there it is something else which i don't know it's it would be nice to know what makes you special so they take you but um it doesn't happen to everyone it didn't happen for me in physicality i never experienced my physical mind my physical experience never experienced so I still don't know why. Possibly they have a plan for me to work here, and if I visited the ship, I would become, I would go a different path. I would go to possibly become, you know, as, as several other experiences. I would go and preach that I have been taken, and I would share my experiences, and possibly want me to be more with, uh, with you guys here waiting. So uh, maybe there are other reasons. Maybe I physiologically not compatible. But basically, that belief that you will apply and you will be taken, uh, take it, take it as is. Uh, some people apply and um, don't experience much. Some people apply and um, experience spiritual visitations, but don't ex experience physical. And I don't know. Other than Kapulnik, I don't know anyone who experienced it fully. Other people have glimpses, but so so the range is wide from, from nothing to a lot, right? Um, so I was, I had a crisis when I just became disheartened, disheartened and um, I just stopped trusting trust in my, my friends in uh, Gork Fitnia, right? Because, you know, they promised and then nothing happened, right? They said the colonies are there, but uh, there is nothing very verifiable about the colonies. There are, basically, there are a few spiritual experiences, but there is nothing tangible. I had, uh, when first I spoke to this door, I had my marks on the body, so that was something tangible, but, and all that, then I had, uh, visitation with um, Kalish from from Pleiades, the, the, from um, Lakesh's race, from the race of Lakesh. He gave us a name, I forgot the name. But anyway, so that visitation was tangible, but again, I didn't see, I didn't communicate. And, uh, and recently I went to C5 and I had um, experience seeing them communicating from the stars, there were blinking lights, and it was a clear communication for the, with the whole group. I counted 24 cases when me and someone else noticed in the same time, noticed the uh, the blinks in the same area of the sky. So that was pretty statistically significant. It was something where I was awake, others were awake, but I think we, both, we all shifted the whole reality to to a state where that was possible. So we... <clears throat> shifted closer to extraterrestrials the matrix became more of higher dimensional so the star started blinking i don't think it was real because i felt pretty sick at that moment it was just my um my whole body revolted against that vibration it, I, it wasn't comfortable for me to be in that vibration 
and after that ended it was just fine so so maybe my body is not suitable for closer contact I don't know I uh, I hear that people who visit the ships they are other way around they feel really great there even after they come back they feel great for a few days and only after that they sort of come gradually come back to physical problems but I don't see many people who have lots of physical problems after the visits maybe there are some uh, one of abductees she has now problems with health but she is over 60 and yeah they she experienced lots of lots of uh, star travel and they didn't treat her well she was she was and as as, as our friend star traveler also she, she has health problems so but you know it was in old times and um, I don't think she, they were taken by friendly people they didn't weren't taken by friendly extraterrestrials so it, it can be blamed not on friendly extraterrestrials but on unfriendly extraterrestrials who treated them not well they did lots of unfriendly manipulations like we recently uh interviewed dr ram richard allen miller and you see in the first minutes of the video when he tries to remember there was a question do you did you experience did you did you meet extraterrestrials face to face and he says yes and then he is immediately blocked they put some blockage in his head is it physical blockage like implant or mental blockage like you know they traumatize you i don't know what they did but basically when he tries to just to speak about it he gets shut down his mind gets shut down so he has to work around and pull information out and produce it so he was able but it was like a torture looking at him okay so Do dr richard Millen watched his interview unfortunately the sound wasn't good the sound wasn't good because I think he was in other dimension. Mm, it was, of course, there is a, you know, his internet is not good, but when he uh, is more coming, more, when he is more energized, his internet works fine. But when he talks on the topics which are uncomfortable, he just shifts away and it's really hard. So I noticed it's not only with him, it is with other people when they get to diff in a too negative vibration or to different vibration they will we'll lose the connection it was with Zachariah and with Wendy and with other channelers we just lose the connection so if they get focused the connection is good and same with me um, it is something about the nature of our reality so how do you apply you go to hukula and there is application there there is application hukula.org application application is there uh, menu and there you can apply and also you can send you a message to sign up to go at gmail.com so it looks like they check it but um again sometimes i send the messages to them and then i ask the girl did you receive it and she says i don't remember it looks like these people in the alien space they don't remember anything like they have they could have a session with you and and they forget they promise like Lakesh said, usually says oh I will check it out for you and the next time he's completely blank you have the same personality but but they don't remember stuff and it was very disheartening for me I did don't like when people don't remember things sometimes they forget things completely like they forget the, 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 the gender of the person or something or like completely so but then I realized possibly they every time we speak to them we speak to a different version of the version of them it is possible we speak to um, a different timeline or a different part of that so I take it as Mm, the aliens are not fully in our reality they are from different reality and there is something about the nature of reality that makes them forget or makes us forget our contacts with them are so surreal it's not it doesn't follow the rules of our reality this the timeline is not continuous for us and for them and it's more than the time it is um basically they 
my understanding, we play a computer game. And when we have aliens, it we borrow a connection to the other reality. So it's kind of a computer game connected through a certain channel to the other to, to the other reality. And we pull out some of information from it. For them, it is real. For us, it goes through some channel, which is right now it's pretty artificial because the humanity doesn't believe in it. So things that are real here is what humanity believes in. And things which are which what humanity doesn't believe in are less real. They are a lot less following the rules of this game. So when you pull out something from a different reality, uh, it doesn't have to follow the rules of of truth here. Like what 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 we consider truth? Something which is very reproducible. Like you know, you tap on the table, you feel it. It's very reproducible. Um, you know, my friend uh, uh, abductee, she mentioned the case when she was driving with a friend in a car and um, there was imminent crash, she would have been crashed by a truck. And something clicked in her and they shifted the car in a different dimension. So the, they passed through the truck and uh, I guess there was truck in front of them and truck behind them, something like that, or they faced in the truck. But in any case, uh, she was able to shift the whole car with her passenger into a different reality. They passed through the truck and then parked somewhere. And both of them couldn't believe that happened. They really felt like they just drove through a truck and um, were completely safe. So, so in some cases, yes, even physical things become surreal, but then you have to shift out of this this system of physicality, which is rare. But usually you kind of, you know, you taste coffee, you, you, you have a taste of coffee. So it's very reproducible. But because the humanity doesn't believe in aliens, aliens are not reproducible. Same thing with the spirits. So the spirits are not reproducible. They don't follow the rules of our reality. So coming back to the idea, some people like really take these uh, messages uh, literally, like they say, you know, they will take you and people send a message and, you know, quit their job and sit waiting for be taken. And uh, it doesn't seem to be working um, fully. So I complained about that to just do once like many my mama long time ago like maybe three years ago i said why guys you don't help me to become financially better and they say uh, they say we are not interested in that uh, they said the main answer was when you're poor your spiritual progress is better that's what this dude said something of that maybe he said it with a little bit different words but it was a clear message you know you are better when you're in trouble. Your spiritual growth accelerates, and the spiritual growth is the only thing that matters. So you couldn't trust the aliens and the spirits to, to help you financially. It just doesn't happen. It happens once in a while, but it doesn't happen in most cases. Um, so the rules are, the rules of the game is that you either have to have a double life. On one life, you follow mainstream rules, go to job, you know, make your money, keep you keep accounting for your money. And another life, you you be in the moment, you uh, be in the now, uh, believe in all things alien. But uh, that's what most people do, and it, it's quite practical. When you speak to mainstream people, you switch to the other version of you, and then you go to the aliens and switch to your alien version of you and you kind of have that in parallel and that's what i have in me i don't like it but basically when i run a webinar i'm like with somebody else i i'm practical i don't even listen to them i kind of keep track of what they say blah 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 but but if i really want to get into the spiritual meaning i have to watch it again and get in my spiritual self and watch it and get high but when you have to press buttons and control the, the discussion, you have to like stay closer to the 
the discussion be down down on the ground which is unhealthy but i think humans are perfectly designed to run pa parallel programs in them so when i listen to the aliens part of me says yeah chicken okay that could be true that is complete nonsense that i don't believe oh here is something interesting and um and the other part is staying high staying high um now i'm starting to learn how to merge these things together basically you can become more harmonious and uh, and that's where miracles happen so recently i noticed that i was able in my physical mind to to get meditation to get manifestation and manifest a few nice miracles like like of healing type of uh manifestation type when you want something to happen not too critical but critical enough and 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 that was and, or just sometimes you can feel like you, i'm doing a lot of planning like my my calendar is full so i'm doing a lot of planning and sometimes you feel like is it really going to happen it feels like blocked maybe you should move it cancel it reschedule it so are uh, or so that, that that kind of miracles are starting to work so you combine your physical mind and you combine your your uh, how do you call it more like uplifted mind uplifted uh, all alien mind alien mind yeah that would be good so alien spiritual mind you combine this together and and synthesize the reality which is better and it's hard work at least it for me for me it's uh you know there is a lot of play there but you really like on schedule like now we work on that you give yourself time and fully focus on it and focus on it in a relaxed playful manner so it takes a lots of lots of work and other way around um i see people get in trouble right uh best example is um uh, Jesus, right? In uh, in in um, Old Testament, New Testament. Sorry, in the New Testament, people successful join Jesus and become poor or even persecuted, right? So, following the Guru doesn't necessarily mean physical success. It could be spiritual success. It could be great service to humanity, which they did service to humanity. Yes, but uh, common measures of physical success, no so like for me again I share my experience when i look at myself if i look at myself with the eyes of old me or my old friends i'm a complete loser right complete lo i lost so many much in, in physicality it's just um it's unthinkable you have that great opportunity that great business opportunity that great science opportunity that great uh administrative opportunity and you blow it up all together and then if you look at from the spiritual side i learned that lesson i learned that lesson i passed through that lesson i shifted to the new new level of uh, development i got uh lots of spiritual help i got lots of spiritual connections i have other things so so basically at certain points of life i say uh, block it. I don't want to judge myself through old ways. All right, and I think that is a possibly a good lesson for you. You either stop judging yourself in the mainstream mainstream criteria, or you, uh, if you do judge it, so just pay attention. What is your criteria? Are you judging yourself from mainstream or from spiritual? From spiritual spiritual perspective. The only thing that matters is your spiritual growth and service to uh, ascension, right? Spiritual growth, service to, asc service to ascension. These are two major criteria spiritual. Everything else, your um, business, money, health, blah, 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 those don't matter. But, but the energy level, the energy which goes through your body matters because for spiritual growth you need the energy go and for energy go for energy flow you need physical health for physical health you need 
you need some sort of physical means like food and shelter and uh, many of us and me still are dependent on how people think about you so and for, for other people to think about you positively you have to be at least above total uh, poverty poverty I think that's the word total uh, you have to be above the minimal um, financial level so so this kind of play together um, so my suggestion is keep keep pushing keep stay afloat like don't go into excesses like some people at least lots of my friends for them uh, minimal financial success is okay to have a house or a rental place and the second they have to travel and they have to go to vacation right and um, I gave up that long time ago like vacation is uh, is luxury so so for me um, try to get uh, at least for me like I don't know in one of the past lives I was linked to Francis of Assisi so so on one hand I want you know to give away all the luxury on the other hand I like to be efficient so it's it's two conflicting conflicting desires but let me crystallize it what I'm saying um, yes if you follow spiritual path usually what happens you fall financially you fall in the mainstream but then you it's, it's just kind of almost classical people awaken to the idea of aliens awaken to the idea of spirituality and the whole life becomes a mess in terms of they have to drop you know they lose a job just because people see that they are not there they are not playing by the rules like you know to keep a job in a uh, office world yeah office type of a job you have to play by the rules you have to support the energy like for example just I will give you an example uh, when I in Russia there is lots of waiting lines it's, I think it's a whole Europe they like waiting lines you you know you go to certain place and you have to wait in in a line in America waiting lines are not as frequent but they're in the grocery store in the um, all bureaucratic places in the postal office a lot of waiting lines right so and especially in China there are waiting lines in China you have to stand and wait in line in a certain position and hold your space energetically they're pretty um, proficient wise energetically that is a good word but so I and I came there with my American waiting line keeping the distance so I, I was cut several times somebody cut me in the line because I didn't keep the right distance and I didn't keep the right energy and same thing in Russia they just tell you are you standing in line or what are you doing here because I'm standing in line in proper position but my energy is different I'm not in that line I'm not supporting the energy of this line I am my energy field is I am not from this world I'm an alien and I don't want to be playing that stupid game of waiting line right so in the office the same thing as soon as your energy changes they feel that the energy change they, they're not blind to energy they just pretend to be blind but they feel that your energy change has changed and you get you lose your job one way or another so that happens so the warning how do you do it <laughs> when you join us and you become spiritually awakening awakened uh it's very likely for you to lose a, an office job there are good jobs that still um, are compatible with um, extraterrestrials like one of the friends he has a pizzeria and he does pizza pizza is very compatible that uh, the other friend uh, he was um, how do you call it um, maintenance worker so I think maintenance is okay there are certain jobs where you don't have to bend your mind you do your physical work so basically most of the physical work jobs are compatible with aliens and most of the office jobs are not compatible with unless you can really live a double life unless you live with a enlightened other being sometimes you you are so happy to get a job where uh, other people are enlightened another problem is you know it's a typical not only for light workers you 
you get an idea that somebody did successful certain business in a certain way. You take a class on business, like Reiki class, Reiki business class, yoga business class, uh, other light worker business class, and then you think that you now can plan to have that business. So you kind of rearrange your finances. You re some people move, organize, invest, get some money, and then the business doesn't work. And that happened to me a million times. And uh, the lesson is um, there are multiple lessons. Sometimes it's not you doing things right. Sometimes you do things perfectly, but the environment is not right. It's very, very often like you start a business, but there is a good business nearby, so you cannot attract customers. That's the main problem. Sometimes all the formula is great, but how do you attract customers in America? Everybody is so blinded by advertisements. Just blinded, deafened, deafened, deafened by advertisement. So uh, they just don't hear you. You propose beautiful thing, you are, beautiful thing you are sure is good for you, good for them. You're sure if it's good for them, but they just cannot, cannot get it like you know i can know you you can offer to them something they really need would make them better successful they really need it but people just don't trust you right so and the final thing is so first it could be not you doing things not right second the environment is not right and third it's not right for your spiritual path like i started some businesses which were perfect and then, you know, my spirit guides wanted thought otherwise. They didn't want me to, to go into the business. They don't want me to be successful in the business. So they want me to, to fly fly low. Like they would support me like in that area of, of misery, right? Like a little bit more misery, a little bit less misery, but uh, they want me there and they don't want me to, to become anyone else. They want my path to be in in certain tunnel. and. Basically, you can't do anything about it. It's um, they they in control, and you're not. You're just playing some computer game where you have a certain scenario, and um, to get out of this path predetermined takes a lot of a lot of trials, a lot of um, work, learning. So basically, you have to change yourself to become to shift to a new path. So you change, you learn, you. When you become kind of proficient in that, you learn all the rules and all, all the environment, you understand how it works. Then you kind of understand how to go around obstacles and and you try a hundred times and the hundred first time, maybe you, you get it right. And again, the timing should be right. Like you should complete certain lessons and then you certainly, then you possibly get it get to the next level but until you complete previous lessons you cannot get to the next level all right um so again that that, that pattern you go on a spiritual path you connect to aliens you fall almost all, always like jim jim fell jim lost his job and he was jobless for a long time like for a few years maybe and then he started his own business and now he's a star. How does it happen? Because he found the place which was absolutely suitable for him and for spirits and they support him in many ways. Uh, same thing with you guys, the human colony. Uh, I screwed up many times, but they keep it going. They keep it going. Like I was busy with something else. From nowhere came Bree and carried a job for a long time, for many months maybe even nine months she was doing the work and before that there were other people who doing, were doing the work and i didn't do anything to to do it it was the spirits who did the job that was so obvious so clear and um just thank you all guys who, who helped um and jim and i jim and i we understand pretty clearly that you don't do it for us you don't do it for um uh, for the future for, for the future reward it is like given forward it is something you do because you're being guided so that's you know when, when the job is its own reward 
it it sounds like lame and uh, cheesy but but that's that's it is that you don't do it for the future you do it for the now you do it because that's your state of mind and then then it makes lots lots more sense okay so you fall down and then you try many times and then you get back when you get back when you get back financially and um, energetically you become a A magician I mean there are different words but you become a magician basically you gradually learn to combine your practical energy practical mainstream skills swimming in this computer game basically learning skills swimming in this computer game or playing in this computer game with the spiritual skills of of manipulating manifesting mystically manifesting things you combine that it becomes one and then you gradually find your way usually you get just enough material wealth and resources to do your job and always there are troubles in the way like my favorite yogananda he had in when you read his book or uh, check out his book it, there is also audio version of the book it's called um, what is it called can you remind me yogananda's main book uh, the autobiography an autobiography of a guru of, of a yogi an autobiography of a yogi that's how it's called so there he it was many times edited but edited by him and his editors so he didn't put there any troubles it's kind of very shiny book because all troubles were many troubles no no many troubles were filtered out but if you read other biographies of yogananda you discover that he had constant trouble with money with followers his his movement was falling apart his um he entered the the time when um, the government was kind of pushing away all the foreign enlightening energies or activities and he got under pressure like many other people who got got under pressure but uh, you know John Lennon was they they screwed up the whole activity of his and uh, Sinatra even Sinatra he was corrupted but still he was under so much pressure so Yogananda was also under pressure and uh, and his closest disciple was suing him um, and uh, another negative things happened so he took it easy because he was working with the spirit full way like he he, he got a crisis like before he wrote his book it was a major breakdown because his finances were in big crisis and People stopped inviting him as a lecturer. He was a great lecturer. He had a great success, but then there was attack by the media on him. So people were afraid to invite him. So he got his, he got a problem with his main uh, activity, basically traveling with lectures. So we ju he just ran away. He ran away to Mexico and meditated on a mountain. And there he got a message. Now he got to write a book. And. Uh, and that changed things again because when you become a writer your finances are different your finances are different it goes through a different path and um, and also notice that his book which the main book is written in completely different language than his other books which i don't understand it's a mystery for me how it happened um his other books are really hard to read and his main book is really easy to read why is that i don't know so um you still go through crisis but you still but you work with the spirit and it's much easier because you have lots of guidance outside of this physical reality so i see people who work with spirit but uh still are grounded not a good word uh brought down 
by their own negativity me too me too but uh, other people you can it's much easier to see it in other people than in yourself right I see it in other people when somebody is fall on the spiritual path but when they speak they are so full of negativity fear and anger and restrictions uh that they don't hear you you say oh here is you know an open path for you and they they just a block there they, they can't hear you or if or, or they hear you differently like you say something and they hear a completely different message right so so you go down and then you gradually climb up um and uh, and that's a pattern which is a warning here you join a spiritual path that's how you go and uh, and it's up to you to be happy at any moment for me i notice myself just mentally going into depression frequently not not strong depression but but sometimes it's somebody else's depression which, which drags you down somebody else's anger like when you're going public and you're doing things many people don't like you just because you express what you are or because they don't like to recognize negativity in yourself uh -huh. and um, and you, you you constantly feel this negative dragging down so at that point I um, I have to force myself up I don't know maybe other people do it differently but I just have to force myself up I notice oh why my mood slides down how about I hold it up I pray I usually just uh, do combination of mantras like home 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 ram 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 uh, my own mantras and uh, and just I go meditate in some days like constantly like three times a day most of the day I meditate uh, it's it's a blessing it's a big happiness it, it's a very good state of being when you can allow yourself to meditate many times a day but um, but I guess it comes with, a, with you know you take charge of spiritual work you take kind of a duty of spiritual work and then you give an opportunity to meditate I guess that's how it works but uh but then you kind of lift yourself up maybe immediately maybe in a few hours maybe in a few days and sometimes you cannot do anything like you go down 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 until you have a session with jim or a session with lucia dashkevich or with brooke or with uh, my other healers local and um and or some random person sometimes and they just do a miracle on you like some other person gives some turns you around somehow and you kind of recover miraculously miraculously it just doesn't make any sense unless except that it is done by someone else outside of your sphere so having a healer working on you out from outside is essential and then uh, paying attention to to the signs signs like dolphins and uh, birds and uh, messages on the screen and what is blocked like sometimes you do something and it is completely blocked and that that you know i i did it all my life like i was superstitious all my life like so now my superstition become becomes my main psychic tool i i really notice like you know candles go down or something like that or connection goes down um, i i realize that something i have to change something myself or in uh, in something i do okay so that's by basically the message in short term you know when you go on spiritual path remain practical and combine your practical ability with your spiritual and alien advice and very often you you may disagree with them uh you know even if the aliens tell you something it doesn't mean you have to trust them often they would uh, give you advice which which is maybe well intentioned but they are not they don't have your point of view right sometimes you just don't understand what they say they say you you like they say one thing usually what they say is can be interpreted in many ways you say one thing and then they say one thing and you you understand it differently so maybe it's good that you don't accept it because you didn't understand it right um so you are still responsible for yourself basically you but uh, after I 
became disappointed at Georg Fichtner, I realized it's it, they are real first, first they are real, but they're not real in uh, through the criteria of of this physical world. You can't apply to them cause consequences criteria like or reproducibility criteria or timing criteria or truthfulness criteria they're real but in their world when they come to us it it doesn't they, it doesn't uh, it is not confirmed by the verification through our traditional means what would be considered a lie using our tradition means it is truth in their reality it's just the way it is transformed and delivered through time space it is it becomes messed up so they are real they are friendly they have limited capacities and um, uh, they play by certain rules which limit their ability to help us um, except you know meditation spiritual upliftment and health they still can do some of the health uh, upliftments. Okay. Um, so short, short messages. You still have a freedom of choice, right? Freedom of choice. And um, combine your practical knowledge, your practical uh, ability to live in this life, combine it with your uh, spiritual insights and uh, learn how to manifest basically learn how to manifest by playing together with the material part of the life and the spirit that's why how you use your body and it just takes skills when you first get a tool you have to learn how to use the tool so you get the spiritual manifestation tool initially it brings you down because there is so much negativity your ability to connect your ability to manifest in the physical world through mysterious ways, through spiritual ways, brings your situation down because you're so, so full of dirt. And as you, as you purify yourself, your ability to manifest allows you to manifest good things. So that's a short message. Let me shorten it again. Combine your practical ability with your spiritual ability and purify yourself until you be able to manifest positivity in your life and keep your moods high because when you are connected to manifestation in the outside world things go uh, your negativity bring things down from uh, outside so keep your moods high and then and keep pushing pushing in a practical way can keep pushing your practicality your reality into the good direction you have to keep working on making it positive one more thing i wanted to mention um so there is a mention on our channel there is a mention of catastrophes cataclysms crises and people take it literally and i took it literally I, you know, when they said to me, don't go to California, there could be an earthquake soon. It was on the first day they, that they say it. So I didn't go to California for many years. It was like three years ago. I moved here not because I chose it. It just happened. It just happened. There was a, a family job situation which brought us here. I was happy to come here, but it wasn't my choice. I was still following their advice. And... Uh, and uh, I don't know. I'm, I take with caution their 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 uh, their predictions of catastrophes. We really don't know what will happen, and uh, they predicted so many things in the past, and it didn't happen. So um, take it with caution. Uh, their predictions usually are. are biased towards immediate action, like you become panicky. And then you go into your spiritual growth. And um, so I think they're a little more overstating the negativity. Uh, negative things happening, but somehow it really depends where you are in your mind. Because for some people, I guess some people happen to end up in the negative timelines. But if you're positive, you 
float like a bubble you float in the positive timeline so all these crises kind of don't happen in your timeline some happen but not more, many of them another thing is uh, you know if people decide that there will be a crisis and you have to run away and they run away maybe it's okay because i don't really know what will happen what if the crisis really happens so they because they get they they run away they maybe are in a better place in a better position and i will be in a worse place so i cannot take responsibility and say the crisis will not happen i have no clue what will happen sometimes i have very strong feeling but um i called um I also tend to predict negative things with high probability that they happen. So I tend to focus on negativity more than is practical. Um, so, negativity. I, I used to keep um, a supply of, um, I had a house in Rochester and uh, I used to keep uh, in Rochester, the winter is uh, the main problem because if you run out of power, you'll be in trouble. Even if you have the generator, you still uh, can have only gas enough for so much or kerosene for so much uh, time. And then again, you will have no water, no electricity, no power, no heat. It's, it's a disaster. Okay. They want me to stop by some reason. The alien said it's, it's enough. Very interesting, right? Yeah, that's the aliens. They just disconnected the power and say wrap up. <laughs> okay. But um, but I don't keep as much of, you know, I, I still have the backpack full of prepared for if I need to run in, in case of earthquake, you can grab the most necessary stuff like your passports and uh, a little bit of cash and a little bit of uh, first like clothes. So if you run in the middle of the night, you still have to carry back up close and you draw you grab the dogs and, and the kids and you run away um so i'm prepared for that but other than that um i don't know you it's better to be mentally prepared than prepared um, than to, to plan the whole life in, for, for the crisis there is still a lot of things to be done in case there is no crisis uh like recent m message was that if you run out of um Uh, out of internet connection and cell phone connection, it will be restored fast. It wasn't my prediction, but that some an expert said so. So possibly we'll have the cuckoo still working, maybe in a little different mode, but there will be still ability to connect. But in any case, connect one to one to other networker, network with other light workers. So so the so in case things go down, you will be able to reconnect. Okay, I have about, I don't know, by some reason they, they want me to stop. I guess I have to stop. Uh, I take one more, one question, I guess, or one comment, and then I'll have to quit. That's the alien, so they really want me to stop. Any questions, comments? Any questions, comments? Hello. Hello, hello. Hey. I guess. Okay. Hey, Lila. Somebody has to talk. It was. Of course. Thank you. It was really very helpful, all your experience, because I have similar problem on one point. When I'm in the webinars, I cannot really concentrate because I try to rush my interview because so many people waiting. And sometimes when I listen to myself later, it is like, oh my God, what the way I am. Uh, so I'm also disappointed sometimes uh, because, you know, in the webinars, you have to, I try not to take the time of other people. So I'm just boom, boom. I, I am cutting the aliens off when they're speaking. Mm -hmm. I am re really feeling bad after and apologize to them. I didn't want to offend you, you know, when you, 
you often when you uh, uh, my, English is my fourth language, you know. Uh -huh. And then when uh -huh. so sometimes I'm missing my words, and sometimes I always say too fast something what doesn't fit properly. So that is the experience. What you said of uh, similar mm -hmm. that when you are in the webinars you cannot uh, that really concentrate you don't even listen to them because i understand because you are in the technical you have to think what are the question and i think the main thing is for all of us what i learn from the webinars we should maybe prepare ourselves and do some homework and write some uh quality questions that is like mine uh, yes, idea absolutely. Yeah, meditating before because, webinars is also a good idea. Like Jim meditates before webinars. And I noticed when I go to webinars, just jump from my previous experience to the new experience, I cannot switch that fast. You have to like really prepare yourself. You will get from the webinar as, uh, as much as you will kind of shift into that energy, yes. Mm -hmm. And then another thing what you said, it was about not really trusting. I think in you it comes because you are scientist and uh -huh. it is and you that comes from your intelligence and you want to understand too many things what is nothing wrong but understanding too many things uh, uh, you disconnect yourself from the heart a little bit right 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 and yeah some some things are just not possible to understand if you stay in, in your mind you really have to trust yeah. and move into this completely trust in love and state and uh, turn off your judgment right but but you know and, that is a contradiction in your nature because the science the uh -huh. scientist has to try to understand to the bottom uh-huh sure and, yeah. and to be dry about Basically, you have to go back and forth you have to go back and mm -hmm. forth but let me say some of our people so are so trusting to the aliens they don't talk to anyone to the other than aliens they are leave the you know they just turn off their judgment completely so whatever the aliens say they would do but if the aliens don't say anything they would i guess uh they lose the connection to the physicality and uh, yeah here's the problem what i experience <laughs> yeah uh, uh, max because i'm also old soul i'm almost trillion uh, years old plus I'm old in uh, in the body in this life so I made a lot of experience and observation so here's my comment to that I, I saw that with people when they following gurus uh -huh, all uh -huh. kinds of gurus and most of them are false that means they're not elevated they're not self realized and there are a lot of false disciples who follow the guru and cut themselves off of everything everything is the same thing what like with the aliens and then later they will blame the guru because uh, uh now they wake up on some point or they didn't wake up and everything is going to be blamed on the on who they are follow so cutting yourself from it is like you know when a, when a person fall in love mostly mm -hmm. in last on this planet they fall uh -huh. in last and they cut themselves off of everything and then later they wake up out of last and they're going to blame the object of the last perfect yeah exactly you see it's all the same and we see that everywhere this obsession with their own limitation their own ignorance that's what this is they are they are blaming aliens they are or they're obsessing with aliens because they did not realize who they are once we realize who we are we are happy to be with ourselves and we are not going to follow anybody blindly it's not possible because you are so happy to be you and you will get realization you get transformation and you only add other people to you uh to your fields to your energetic fields but you're not going to be walking in anybody's shoes because you like your own yeah, shoes point, yeah many people take on uh, the roles which are given to them in youtube instead of finding you know if this really fits them but if you even if you don't understand who you are right because mm -hmm. 
I don't, you know, for me, like I'm many things every day. I still don't know who I am. Uh, so it's hard to find who you are. But if you, even if you don't understand who you are, uh, you have to pick and choose and try it empirically, meaning you try and see what happens. Yes, but uh, people, when they try and uh, you see, you can try because you don't have a fear. But the average person who is blocked by fear uh, are going not even try. Only pe a person who didn't find themselves and is fearless, less, I mean, kind of fearless, uh, that person will go to adventure, on the adventure in life. But if the average person doesn't have the option of trying many things because they are full of fear, how they can, how they can even have a, how they can have a touch with their own self, they cannot. So they put themselves in a, okay, we humans here on this planet, we have a label, labels. We label it, label, label everything. Everything is in the box. You belong to this country, you, this, you are this, you are that, you are that. Because nobody wants to live out of the box. You, you're saying you're going to try all that. That means you don't live in the box. That means you conquer to some degree of fear. So that I is actually, what this I mind agree with that. I think it. I think it helps if you're able to find out more about yourself, because those that don't search for themselves and they just they don't <clears throat> by not really realizing who you are, what you're capable of, what your experiences have been, it leaves you more prone to like fall into these various like you were saying like the gurus and the and um a lot of the uh, mediums and psychics out there who have large i just did a video on this this morning who have large followings are not necessarily the ones who are going to give you the true information about yourself and and a lot of people are so prone to thinking oh well i really want to find out more about myself more about who i am so I'm going to <clears throat> listen to this person who has a lot of following and they're going to tell me exactly what I need to know. I don't need to work on myself. And that's where the problem lies, I think. Yes, but this is not only a guru. It could be a wrong partner. Oh, yeah. No, it, I completely it, agree. It, yeah, yeah. It could be Britney Spears. <laughs> if somebody is obsessing with Britney Spears and uh, do whatever they do, uh, you know, they put her in the in her dream, in their own dreams. They they think about her. They do some activities with her, on whatever levels. Uh, they have picture of her. They're obsessing with an object, and they also they can lose jobs. They can this they be dysfunction in the. It is like blaming aliens for what? Right. Blaming aliens, blaming anybody. Truly, we can we cannot even blame this government. We cannot even blame this evil government because we allow them to do with us what they are doing. Right? Um, you know, I I am not going to comment on that just because I try to stay out of the whole government. Yeah, but in general, it is like it is for but, a, uh, yeah. But I agree. Like, I mean, example. You, everybody's own life is relative to their belief system so um it's it's just a very sketchy line between having like your your two sides like max was talking about before i had to step out for a second where you have your normal life and then um that's a very human functioning life and then no one knows that you have this other life where it's completely um alien to <laughs> to most people that you know you you have contact with the galactics and you speak this galactic language and like you were actually born on a ship and like you know all this stuff but there's but in your real human life there's very few people who can know those things because because you just you don't you know you don't want to be labeled yet you have to just be very careful to like separate those two and i think that's the problem that some of the people are having is they they don't quite know how to separate the two Max, are you there? Uh, <laughs> uh, did, did he drop out? <laughs> Somebody, no, uh, yeah, he dropped out, but we are still live. So, 
but uh, the, discu the discussion is very important because we all have the same problems here and uh, this, uh, this finding yourself, what is that finding yourself? My realization about that is to allow to live in your world. From the childhood, you have a premonition, you have uh, you flavors of life, what you want to be. What, that's it's already there to some degree. They didn't block everything. So right. just follow the instincts if you have one. If you don't have instincts, follow the heart. Mm -hmm. Not know what heart is, then research what all what beauty all what good is that's follow the heart and that's how you can find yourself there is no other way finding yourself if you don't follow your heart because when you follow your mind that is a rational thing that will always be about money what's good for me and what is not good for you well that's not the reality of the high level of high consciousness the reality of the high consciousness is what can I do for you? Mm -hmm. That's the think, highest consciousness. I think in today's society, it's there's a there's a lot of problems.